Hi, my name is Martin Tully. I'm a sales engineer here at Portnox. And today what I want to do is give a demonstration of our TACX Plus. Um, so TACX Plus can be sold as a standalone application. Um, if you currently have a Portnox license, um, then with our network authentication uh, license that you might have, uh, you would be able to uh, use one admin um, or 100 devices. If you have our network access control license, um, then you can do two admins, 200 devices. Um, <clears throat> and of course, uh, that is how we price it. Um, it is by either admins or devices, whichever number is higher. Uh, we also have some great documentation. So if you go to tacx.com, um, some great information about the features, integrations, pricing, FAQs. Um, so all that is is here, um, as well as our uh, docs.portnox.com uh, give you complete step-by-step uh, -step process on how to set up a TACX server. Um, so the TACX server uh, does need to be on-prem, um, unlike our cloud radius services, which do not. Uh, it can be fully in the cloud. TACX does need to have uh, some sort of uh, local presence. Um, so whether that might be a container that you can uh, run in Azure, as you can see here, or maybe in AWS, um, of course, with the connection back to your local network, um, or again, the Hyper-V or VMware uh, TACX server. Um, in the demonstration, I'm gonna show you what that looks like um, in VMware Workstation. <clears throat> uh, so a quick little diagram, what that looks like. So in terms of the architecture or the flow of the authentication, <clears throat> a user wants to uh, connect to uh, a device uh, they'll open up an SSH session. Uh, they will enter their username and password. The device then sends it off to that TACX server that you deployed. Um, the TACX server will then forward that to the Portnox cloud. Um, the Portnox cloud then would make some decisions from there. Uh, one, look up that user um, inside an authentication repository. Right? So we'll be able to look up that user, look them up inside that auth repo that you set up. Um, then we can match them to a group um, and assign a policy to them. So in your tenant, if you stood one up already, uh, if you go to settings here at the very top and you click on that, and here in the middle of the screen, uh, what you will see here is the TACX plus service option right there. <clears throat> and you can see here, set up a local TACX or run a container. Both of these links would just take you to the documentation. Um, I'm going to click on this plus sign here. And what you see here is that I've deployed a couple already. I have one container already, um, and I have also a virtual machine. Um, this was a new one that I'm going to set up. What I really want to do here is click on this button. And as I said, we're going to do a virtual machine. So I'm going to select this uh, option here. And when I select that, <clears throat> you'll notice that I have some fields I need to fill out. Um, so this name uh, really could be uh, anything you want that to be, just give it a name. Uh, then you'll enter your static IP, uh, your net mask, uh, a gateway broadcast, and some DNS servers. Um, the port is port 49, which is uh, standard uh, for TACX. Uh, you'll have this shared secret that you can use and put into your devices. So once you've filled out all this information, uh, there is a button here that says uh, save and download. Uh, when you hit save and download, what that does is it creates an, uh, an ISO file for you. Um, and that ISO file is what you're going to use uh, to uh, uh, actually mount that into the VMware image. So uh, the first thing you want to do is download that VMware image. Um, so you'll download the VMware image. You enter all your information. You download the ISO file. And you will then load that ISO file into that image and boot it up. Um, and so if you take a look here <clears throat> in my uh, VMware workstation, uh, here is the local TACX that's running. Again, it is running in VMware Workstation. If I take a look at the settings here, uh, you will see <clears throat> that I have a ISO file that I'm referencing. So that is that ISO file that I downloaded here. Um, so you can see that right there, that ISO file. I downloaded it. I basically just mounted it in there. The other thing that you can see is what little amount of resources this VM is using. So 512 of memory, one processor, 1,000 megs of disk space. So once I have all that set up, <clears throat> I'm going to go back to my tenant. So I have that stood up. 
Um, and you can see here I have my, my CACX server running. You can see it is active from within here. Uh, the next thing I want to do um, is basically set up that authentication repository. So here on the left hand side in the tenant, uh, I have my authentication repositories. And if I click on it, uh, you'll see here, these are the ones that we can uh, integrate with, right? So local AD, uh, Google, Google Workspace, um, Azure slash Entra or Okta. Uh, for the example, I'm going to use Azure. So you can see here, I've already uh, integrated my tenant uh, to Azure um, and really will walk you step, uh, step by step uh, on what the uh, instructions and basically permissions we're going to be requesting. Um, this is very simple and easy to do. Um, and again, we'll just show you the, the permissions that are going to be requesting and we'll take care of all the rest in the back end for you. Um, once I have that done, um, the next piece really what I want to get to is basically creating groups, right, and mapping uh, my authentication repository to a group. So if I come in here into groups, <clears throat> what you see here is I've already created a group called TACX Plus. Um, the, if, uh, because this is TACX, I don't really need to do anything here in this particular settings piece um, unless I want to enable MFA. Uh, so there is the capability to enable MFA for all the accounts in this group. Uh, the thing here is that you need to be aware of is that the agent P must be installed um, so that you put that on your mobile device. Um, with that license, um, when you purchase TACX, you would be able to use the agent without any extra cost and put it on your mobile device for multi-factor authentication. <clears throat> and then here under members, I'm gonna define who are the members or a group that is going to belong to this TACX plus group here in Fort Knox Clear. Uh, basically what I did here is I just defined one specific user, that's myself um, and I belong to this group. And then the other thing I did here, uh, if I scroll down here to the bottom, is I specified that I'm going to have a TACX plus policy assigned to this group. Um, you can see here, this is the TACX plus policy that I've assigned to them. I've also stated that it is going to go to the, the organizational level. So you can see here, it says equals totally five. Um, and you can see that is the organization level, uh, but you have the ability to really change this out as well. So if maybe if I wanted to, um, you know, put this specifically for maybe the Boston office or the Austin office, um, I have the ability to do that here. Um, so you can assign policies based off different sites. <laughs> so let's take a look at this policy that I've assigned here. So if I go to policies um, and what you see down here under the TACX plus authorization, um, I'll go down there. And what we'll see here is I have two policies. I have the admin 15 uh, that I was referencing out earlier and I have a command based one uh, policy that I have here as well. Um, so if I take a look at this policy, you can just click on this here. And what you can see here um, is the privilege level that I set up, uh, maybe specific allowed services, custom attributes that you might want to add. You can do that from within here. Uh, command base, you can also do command base, right? So basically allow all the commands and just forbid some or deny all the commands and just allow some. So you have the ability to do that from within here. Again, once you create that policy, uh, very simple as you can see here, um, I will then assign that policy uh, to a specific group. So now let's see what that looks like in action. So I'm um, going to the alerts section here in Port Knox uh, and I'm going to open up a party session. And so I have that over here. And I'm going to load this Cisco switch that I have here and I'll say open. And when it opens up, I have my command prompt ready to log in. I'm going to use my Azure AD credential. And you'll notice here that I'll uh, authenticated successfully. You'll also see here in the alerts that I have, it says that I've successfully authorized uh, to log in to that 154, which is exactly what I logged into coming in from this IP address. Um, and is again, you can also see the authentication success from within here. Um, and now if I start typing in some commands, so if I maybe uh, type in something like config and maybe interface, uh, go to, 13 
and maybe I'll do a shut, no shut in here. I'll say n, maybe do a show uh, runny config. So I'm just typing in things here. Um, now I'm done, I'm gonna move this out of the way. And again, you can see here everything that's happening. Uh, so you can see here that I successfully authenticated. You can see here uh, all the accounting pieces that I've done. Uh, so config T, uh, shut down the interface, no shut, and doing the show running config, uh, which was that last piece that I did. So again, we captured all the commands that that user um, entered while they were in that SSH session. Again, you can see the group that I've got assigned to, uh, the policy that, got, that uh, was administered to me based off the group that I'm in. Again, the IP address of the switch that I logged into. So all that information is there. Uh, another piece here that's really nice is under notification, uh, you do have the ability to send this to a SIEM solution, as you can see there. Um, and so you can see that from within here. Another thing that you're seeing here, just real quick, that just popped up um, to show you that there is an authentication success. Uh, because I did a shut, no shut, my Cisco phone came back up um, and authenticated via Mac-based authentication. That is part of our network access control solution. Um, <clears throat> in terms of what do I see under when I go here under devices, well, here's that user uh, that I used to log in. Um, and you can see here, again, the date time uh, that I connected and as well as the uh, IP address of the switch that I connected to. If you have any questions, please reach out to your account executive and they'd be more than happy to help you out with any other questions. Um, and that's it for today. Thank you.